All right, so I'm really excited for this video where I am here to challenge somebody to a, multiple CSS challenges. Um, and it's someone who normally doesn't dive so much into the world of front end development. So uh, maybe more, more comfortable with the back end, JavaScript, and all of that. So we'll see how they can do. And this is Rancid right here. Why don't you let us know a little bit about yourself before we jump into the challenges? Sure. Thanks, Kevin. Happy to be here. A really big fan of your channel, first of all. Kudos to the awesome CSS videos that you have. So my name is Rachit. I'm from India and I'm a software developer. I'm a full stack software developer. I had been working with Microsoft in the past. And now right now I am in a high frequency trading firm. I have been running a YouTube channel of about like data structures, algorithms, coding interviews, you know, because I had been doing these problem solving kind of things for almost, um, you can say, eight years. So yeah, I have, I have, I really love this and I have a lot of stuff related to that. So yeah, and we actually have a video on my channel wherein um, Kevin kind of built or, you know, uh, learned those problem solving skills for me. And the link to the channel is just down below. So uh, make sure you go and check it out if you want any content pretty much other than CSS. Uh, so it's a great channel. Definitely recommend you go and check it out. And yeah, I'm really excited for this. I think it'd be a lot of fun. So let's go and jump in and see those challenges. So let's see. So we have... Uh, center the smiley face below both vertically and horizontally okay i can see that we have this smiley face over here and we have to do so like i think this is the css 101 question right like if you want to test if someone knows css this is the first thing that you will ask yeah um i i hopefully like hopefully i know the answer to this and i don't think we need JS, uh, javascript so i'm i will basically just close this down so i think we have a bunch of things i don't have to write over here that is like you have added for probably beautifying the screen, but this is where the main stuff goes, I think. Yeah, exactly, yeah. All right, um, so can I can I use um, dev tools over here? Yeah, you can. Um, it is a bit weird sometimes in um, CodePen when you open the dev tools, just because it's an iframe, uh, but it, you can ah, get okay. in and find what you need. Yeah, okay, yeah, I, I basically just wanted to know how it's looking. So, okay, so we can see that dev is taking the full width over here and the class name is center me that makes sense <laughs> and um so the thing is uh the width is already taking 100 percent because that's how they work they fill in the full parent uh, if you explicitly do not mention the width so yeah that's fine but the text over here it's starting from the left hand side and because that is the default behavior um so one thing that we can do is um, in the content we can say text align center Right. And hopefully what it would, yeah, exactly. So this takes care that the text inside the dev is at the center. Now we have done the problem 50%. The next 50% is the height, right? Now, uh, I, I feel that the proper way to do that would be, um, so let's see where is, so, okay. So here is the content div class and here is the center me, right? Um, so one thing that we can do is basically, you know, make this content as a flexbox container. So if I do that, uh, I'll, I'll quickly un explain why I'm doing that. But once I make that a uh, flex container, uh, okay, so we lose this thing, which was working initially. Now it's not working. And the reason for that is probably, you know, uh, because now this is a flex item. Now it's taking the complete height, but now the width is limited to whatever the content is because flex item that's how they work they start on you know because the default direction is row so they kind of stack in the horizontal direction as a row so this can be fixed um, i think we can do something like let's see um we can say flex uh, okay so i think i need to write dot center me that's where the next code should go uh what i can do is basically say that the flex basis is 100 percent Right. And now that is working. Now I'm saying that you have to take uh, extra space if it's available and that is working. Now to fix the alignment, probably what I can do is, uh, so I, I think we have, so in the main axis, we have justify content in the other axis, we have something like align items or aligned content. I'm always confused between that. So I'll use one and if it doesn't work, I will quickly change. So I think the, uh, align content is not working because the height is like really stretched uh, because of that it's not working yeah uh, let me see what we can do I think the other way is to actually say that the justify content is also you know 
um, we can get rid of the text align. We can say justify content as center. So that if mm -hmm. we, even if we have one thing, it goes to the center. And let me just check what's happening right now. <laughs> <laughs> so one yeah, nice okay. thing with the dev tools is we do have some, some flex inspectors and stuff now, but right. So there, yeah, that's working now. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was saying that, you know, you have to grow hundred percent. So that's why it was mm -hmm. not working. Um, so align content is not working. Let me see if it's align items. Yeah. There you go. So I always get confused between line items and align content. But I think the good thing is if you want to center anything, these two lines always make it work. Like this is basically saying that whatever items you have, you have to place them center in your main axis. Since it was flex row, it's basically horizontally uh, putting the smiley face into the center. And this is like in the cross diagonal axis, like what do you, where do you want to align your items in that mm -hmm. axis? So yeah, yeah. And uh, I, we, I mean, I, I'm writing, I write CSS all day long every day and I still mix up align items and align content. So don't yeah. feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this always uh, happens. Yeah, it's also been made more comp because align, con um, align content with flex you don't use very often. It's only if huh. you have a flex wrap and there's other stuff happening. Yeah, uh, you have but, multiple rows kind of thing. And yeah. Then exactly, yeah. Then use it. But then we also have grid now. And with grid, you'll probably use align content a lot. So it just uh -huh. makes it even more confusing a little bit there. But yeah, awesome. Yeah. But, I mean, you nailed yeah. it. I, I think I read about grid, uh, like, I think one year back. But at that point of time, probably I didn't use it much because I think when I uh, viewed can I use .com, at that point of time, it was not widely adapted probably. But I, I think now it's like, really you know um, it makes life easy and it's like the next thing challenge two all right so we have to create three call three equal columns inside the mm -hmm. dot content class and i think the dot content is the parent yeah so basically it's holding okay what does it have it has a div um can i make this a bit bigger and this a bit yeah yep, yep. probably this is better all right so I have to create three columns inside the content class. And as we can see over here, we have, uh, like this is one div, it's having a heading and a paragraph and we have three such divs. And exactly. what, what we want is kind of like a newspaper or magazine kind of thing, wherein we have three equal columns on the screen. Yeah. So, uh, of course the first intuition is to use flex, uh, flex column actually, so that, you know, um, no, actually flex row makes sense. Yeah. So if, if I, if I make it a flex, um, all the devs will go side by side and there we go. We have something, but I think, uh, they are not of equal width. As you can see the middle dev, uh, you have, I think, put a larger text as compared to the other two. So this is taking extra space. Um, now the thing over here is, yeah. So, so flex, how it works, I believe is, um, it has one row. And then it has flex items and it is placing those items in the row. If the items are not taking a lot of space and you have extra space left after the rendering, uh, you can control the extra space distribution using justify content and all those things. You can also use flex spaces on your flex items to control that, you know, uh, or you can use flex group, right? Uh, which basically decides how much you have to grow. In this case, for example, if I have dev and let me just use SCSS to make a life a bit easier. So what I mean to say is inside the content, if I, uh, for each div inside this, if I try to make the flex grow as one. Uh, just the, take off the star there. It's actually going to cause some problems. Just the. Oh yeah. Sorry. Yeah. There you uh, go. I didn't, I don't know why I did that. No. Uh, I, I, I was kind of saying that every div. So kind yeah, of everything. Yeah. It's, it's been a while. <laughs> I, I wanted to say every div inside content and yeah, this is the way to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so right now it's not going to work out because you know, um, this works if we had extra space and we wanted to control how much that space, like how do we want to control the distribution saying flex grow one means him hey and each flex item is going to get the extra space equally. So because of that, we used to have like the equal width kind of thing, but over here, I understand why you gave this challenge and, uh, we are having this longer div. So we don't have actually extra space. So this is like not doing anything. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I think one easy way to fix this is probably give this a width of 32% or 33 if you want. Right. Mm -hmm. 
so now we have kind of like we have made sure that the divs are having equal widths and they are having three columns yep um so this is this works perfectly and it, it, to me that's a solution to the problem so that's perfect okay. Um, just to dive in a little bit deeper and what's, we were talking about flex gross, there, another property that's actually by default is flex shrink, um, uh -huh. which is what's working right now. That's the reason that, cause you know, you did display flex and they all just sort of fit in, but the middle one, as you said, was a lot bigger and it's because yeah. there's more content. So flex is doing its algorithm stuff. It's trying to see how big it wants everything. And then it's, they're all really big and then it's shrinking them down. But mm -hmm. as soon as we declare a width on it, now we're saying like be this size, but What's really interesting here is you could actually say width 100% uh, and okay. it's still going to work. Really? Uh, or it could be 200, any size you want. And the reason it's working oh. is because now we're saying be 100%. So it's going to try and be the size of the parent. But then because there's a flex shrink on, they're all shrinking and they're all shrinking by the same amount. So they all have the flex shrink oh. of one. So they all have the same default size and then they're all shrinking okay. by the same amount. So they all become equal columns. Okay. The reason I like this approach is if you had two columns, you would still have two mm. equal columns. If you had six columns, you'd still have six equal columns. Yep. Yep. Um, so yeah, this is one way that I like to approach it. Yeah, it's actually very good, right? Uh, but one thing which I found is like, I think there was a certain uh, realignment when I changed from 33 to 100%. I, I think that makes mm -hmm. sense because initially we were also leaving 1% extra space. Exactly. So yeah, probably yeah. this is more accurate, I believe. Mm hmm and then if but, you wanted to, you could, uh, there's another, we can also do a, a gap, uh, not on the div itself, but on your con like right after display flex. Uh, you so mean gap? There's a gap property that is new to Flexbox. It's been, we've had it for grid. So you can put whatever number you want, say 20 pixels, pixels. or. Okay. Um, Let's put five. It's not visible. Yeah. 20. Yeah. So a bigger number. So that's going to create, uh, a, you know, it's the spacing between though. the columns now. Yeah. Um, this is, it's been around for a little while with Flexbox, but Safari just got support for it. So it's pretty exciting. It makes life yeah, really easy. Yeah. So the key <laughs> yeah. is to play with the width property and mm -hmm. make sure that it's hundred percent and then let now Flexbox, um, uh, like leverage the flex string properties now. Exactly. Exactly. And you could, I mean, I, I know some people I've shown, I usually do it with width because it's the simplest way to understand it. Some yeah. people prefer using flex basis just because it's a flex property. Yeah, uh, yeah. At the end of the day, they come out to the same solution. So it's yep. whichever one you prefer. This was beautiful. Uh, I really love that it's not dependent on how many columns you have. For example, in my mm -hmm. approach, it was like 100 divided by three. If you have four, it would be 100 by four. Yeah. Awesome. Man. Thanks. Uh, so now this is saying prevent the content from overflowing at small screen size. Uh, so yeah, now uh, if you shrink down the um, yeah, oh, okay. that way, and at one point, oh. there we go. Yeah. <laughs> It's coming so this out. is like, this is one of the big problems with using Flexbox is is this. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everything is coming in one row and like at this point you will say, oh man, this is awesome, right? But then as exactly, you like, yeah. <laughs> reach this point, it's not really. So I think uh, uh, you, I, I think I have to use media queries now uh, because you know, like as soon as this is not making sense, probably I think it's not making sense already. And um, so right now the width is close to 930, right? 930 mm -hmm. pixels and it's not looking good. So at this point of time, probably we want a three column layout. And then as we go down, probably three columns is also not going to look good, but let's actually fix it for three th uh, 930 pixels. So how the syntax works for media query. And I think I remember this is um, at the rate media, we have screen um, and we have the max width property over here that I'll write. So if the max width is, let's say 930 pixels, right? Mm -hmm. So I now I can write a bunch of CSS over here, which will only be applied to my DOM only if uh, max width is up to 930, right? Yeah. So just to make sure this works fine, I'll just, uh, sorry. I'll just make sure that the body background turns green. Okay. So now as, as the width is bigger than that, it's wide. And as soon as it crosses 930 mark, it's uh, like, it's turning green. So now at this point of time, I actually want to, you know, uh, start doing that decomposition thing, uh, like breaking this five column layout into three. So I think, uh, let me see. So we have content and then again, the same thing, right? We have uh, five devs 
and each div mm-hmm. is having a heading h2 and a paragraph p exactly okay so so content is already flexed because of which they are coming into a row but now i want to do something over here okay so let's see how to do that um, probably we can say dot content and again i think i have to use scss um so what do we want to do dot content and then i think we want to talk about the divs and over here if we can say that you know now you are going to take um uh, 33% <laughs> uh it okay did, okay so this is um i th- I, I think we also need to uh, probably add flex wrap probably that's why it's trying basically it's saying that i can't take more than one rows uh, so how to do that well we can do something like for dot content we can say flex um, wrap i think it's wrap mm-hmm. yeah there you go there we go so over here we have five and then as soon as the breakpoint triggers we have like three columns over here now it's looking better than before i think um and then i think at 700 pixels it's a good time to actually break it further into two so how that's going to work is similar to this one we can just copy paste this and say that when the width is and i think i forgot the it was 7 700 i think so if the mat, max width is 700 pixels what we want is we again want the wrapping property but now the width should be 50% so yeah it's looking much better probably like we have something like this then three columns and two columns and so on like if you want to do it further we can probably do it but yeah that's the overall idea awesome yeah so the main the main thing i wanted with that challenge is just to bring in that flex wrap um which is a, a bit of a weird property um but it's a really important one and it, it is off by default so normally it's no wrap and the idea is because if not you wouldn't get columns it wouldn't you know you'd have to do a lot more work um but then you run into these situations where things can overflow so uh definitely using the flex wrap is is a great way to do it and i do like that for your media queries you're thinking about it like how do we make it look as good as possible at the different sizes right. um so that's always a good thing cuz i think a lot of people just go like oh i need it to you know do this one thing and uh, so like i sort of like how you broke it down and when is it when are the columns getting too narrow it's the right yes. way to be thinking about it yeah Yeah, so I mean there are ways with using um com- combining a flex grow with it as well um and or you could I mean you could use one media query that changes the flex direction and then you would just go from columns and then they would just uh, go to rows. So that is one option. Um another one is to uh it, it's a little bit like what you've done actually but just by adding flex grow um in or setting like min and max widths you can sort of play around with it a little bit too. All right so i think i have passed this one as yeah, well that's good. and we can move to the next one challenge 4 all right so we are almost halfway uh so, so this anyway, this one's a little trickier i'll just let you know There, there's a, a trick to this one <laughs> i mean if, when it's when it's coming to animations like i already i think will get zero numbers <laughs> I mean, i'm not that good with animations uh so we have to animate the gradient on over okay and what do we have we have a div class content and then it's having margin border height and background okay so here is the background and we want to animate it on hover right mm-hmm. so let me first use scss okay so what uh, i think the syntax for doing something on hover is first of all we have something like um, and hover something like this now okay. whatever i write over here that css is applied whenever we have Oh, when whenever we are hovering the div so just to make sure it's working uh, let's add a cursor pointer right okay so there you go now when i am hovering i i can see that you know and let me just make this a bit bigger so uh, now you can see that this is functioning fine but how do i animate it um i'm not that good but i think there is a good property like transition in css mm-hmm. and if you don't know like uh, the I, i really love this all kind of thing like if you want to change the width you can do something like width one second and you know some other property two seconds and you can control the timings of the animations but like when you do, really don't know what property like i i love this thing like all one seconds so this kind of you know uh, saves me when i try to 
do the animation so now what i'm trying to do is my uh, idea is i will change the degrees over here 45 degrees probably and now like when i do the hover you know yeah exactly so this is uh, okay so this is happening like the background is yep. changing but um so, so this i was is expecting where the, you're yeah. expecting it to transition so yeah, you're I, I can see this evil second. smile yeah. i can see this evil <laughs> smile on your face uh, so yeah, this is this is a common thing that people want to do in animating gradients. Um, and from you can animate or transition almost anything with CSS. Uh, you do want to be careful just really quickly that uh, there's a lot of things that you can, but it doesn't mean you should just because there are performance <laughs> issues that can come up. Okay. Um, but with backgrounds, um, you can do a background color. So if you just had red into green, no problem. But okay. linear gradients and gradients in CSS, they're actually part of the background image syntax. So it, we're oh. using the shorthand background, but they're actually background images. Okay. And okay. because it doesn't know it's a gradient versus just like an actual picture. So say you had an image, you couldn't uh -huh. like CSS wouldn't be able to animate a picture. <laughs> so it yeah. can't animate. Yeah. It just, they just said background image can't be animated. So uh -huh. linear gradient itself can't be oh. animated. So okay. I was mean with this one. This one is a mean one on my part. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So basically the question is to animate the gradient. And then uh, Kevin is saying, uh, hopefully CSS does not know how to animate gradients. <laughs> right. So <laughs> there is a way in the future that's not, we can't uh -huh. use it yet, but it's coming okay. where we'll be able to animate the colors within a gradient. But right now we still okay. can't do it. Um, but what we can do at the moment, because we can't do the gradient itself, uh, or sorry, we can't animate the background image mm -hmm. property, but we can mm -hmm. animate other parts of the background property. So the oh, first thing okay. I want you to do is after, okay. um, in not in the hover, but in go up to like mm -hmm. the regular content. Yeah. And we're going to do, uh, so just after all that, put in background size and put in like 200%. Okay. So guys, this is like, uh, we are doing cheating a little bit. The <laughs> exactly. interviewer themselves are helping us. <laughs> Uh, so uh, now okay, okay, I got it. I, I got it. I think now yeah, okay. uh, we can play around with this property. Uh, we couldn't play around with this. So basically, I think what you're saying is uh, kind of, you know, do that, uh, that drag or something like that. It looks like it's kind of moving. Exactly. Something like that. Okay. So I think we can do something like background size, uh, 100%. Yeah. Now, now it looks really cool. So there's pretty much any background property can be animated. So you can do background position, you can slide things around, you can do the background size and get it to change too. Um, so there's, if it's below 40, 100%, <laughs> it, it gets funky, yeah. <laughs> this is, uh, Kevin, like, do you want to explain what just happened? <laughs> yeah, so because the background size is less than 100%, it's doing the gradient, so when you hover, yeah. The, okay, the gradient repeating. is going, it's going from there to well now 90%. So, and then it's going to start the gradient over again because by default background backgrounds also repeat. So it's doing it 40% and then it's repeating the background over and over again, or now 90%. Okay. So then it starts it over again. But do, don't we have something like background cover stretch or something? Um, it's background size cover. Oh, okay. In, oh, damn. Yeah. I, so, yeah. I can't, so you can't, do I can't it. create. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, you wouldn't want to drop below 100% with the background size. Um, uh, it's cover, background size cover. I don't okay. know if that works with gradient. I've never done it with a gradient. I don't know how that works. Let's see. Uh, it's not oh, it can't okay. animate it. Yeah, it's yeah because you're so changing the value from 200% exactly. to something else. So it yeah. should be the same thing. Okay, I think we yeah. can change probably this to center or something. Um, so you, I would leave the background size at 200%. Uh, yeah. And then in the, in the hover, don't do background size, do background position. Okay. Uh, no, leave that one. No, sorry. Sorry. Leave that one. And then, yeah, that one, change that one to background position and just put it to like um, center or left, uh, right. Maybe try center and let's see what happens. It should work. Ah, uh, okay. There we go. Um, so what it's doing now is by default, the back, the default background position is your top left. So we're seeing the top uh -huh. left of the gradient or the left side of the gradient. And uh -huh. then it's animating it to the middle of the gradient now. So Got the gradient, it. we have the big gradient that's sort of off to the side, and then it's sliding yeah, yeah. Yeah, the exactly. gradient around. Yeah. And this looks cool as well. All right. Uh, so yeah, I, I I knew that I didn't know that much about uh, animations, first of all. And thanks to Kevin for making this more hard. <laughs> <laughs> so that one, this one was a little bit mean, though. This one, <laughs> this one's one of those ones you either don't know it or you know it. So it's yeah. <laughs>
cool uh let's move to challenge 5 but i really love this man i'm learning quite a lot of things all right guys uh give the box below multiple borders okay so we have content and so, um, yeah yeah this is another one of the ones that is maybe a little bit mean <laughs> and you, either you're going to know it and you're going to get this one in like 3 seconds or i, I i'll okay. have to walk you through is it it's is one it or like, the other so <laughs> i think it's like a chemistry question you either know it or you don't yeah exactly yeah <laughs> um let me try some funky things oh i am a magician <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah that's all i could have tried possibly okay. i like do you, ha- you have to help me over here a bit uh, no problem so there's there are two options so the first one um if we could use the outline property as well so outlines are just like borders um okay. so if you go in the big different a border is part of the box model so it will take up space whereas an outline isn't so it's visual only it doesn't actually take up space on your on your um design now it's actually yeah, oh, it's yeah, probably yeah. make it like 10 yeah. pixels or something i can see it uh there we go so outlines are cool there is another cool thing actually uh that i didn't think about until now but if you go on the next line and do uh outline offset no but can i can i have multiple outlines something like this uh so this is well with borders and with outlines the one issue is we can't um, uh there we can only put in one um okay. so this is where other you, properties you like to, border yeah. outline so this is where we something. this is it's a, a bit of a, we'll call it a hack um okay. and i'll see I'll, i'll let you try it out i'm just going to say that you need to use a box shadow um box shadow okay i won't let you know how to do it but or, i'm assuming um, you know how to like so so yeah box shadow like uh basically box shadow will go give a shadow to the box but uh, exactly like so, i forgot the syntax i think it's something like black and you have to define the thickness of exactly the blur how so that should there like we go this. yeah so if um, we do that now the advantage with box shadow unlike borders or outlines is you can have multiple ones okay so, so you are saying exactly something like this yeah. okay um yeah this is cool um 30 pixels to me okay now i'll give you what's happening now is they're all overlapping each other so it's yeah, just yeah. getting muddy um yeah. so there is one when we do the 0 0 it's those those first two numbers are the offset so one's horizontal offset and the second one is vertical offset then okay. we have the blur uh so the 10 pixels is your is your blur uh just yeah. make sure you put px on those or oh yeah yeah thing. like for zero you don't need anything right yeah exactly so that should we should see that one's going to be okay. there you go see okay, okay. getting pulled down um there is a fourth value that you can put but it's an optional one and that's why it's working even though we're not setting anything um, um but okay. after your after your blur you can give them um it's called the spread spread so if you go in there and you put say 10 pixels or whatever you want you'll okay. see what it does Oh oh okay so it's kind of like uh like the width of the shadow something like that yeah so it's saying go that many pixels then start the blur okay so it's it's okay, yeah it's okay. a way of, so of pulling I, the shadow uh, out uh okay so I, i think we can remove this probably and um so we have 10 pixels 10 pixels black then we have 20 mm-hmm. pixels 10 pixels so this is like how much blurry we want right so we can yes. keep this also as 10 um and okay so i think we don't want blurriness we can probably remove that and probably mm-hmm. we as we have more borders we can increase the spread right we can make this there 20 we go. And we can make this there 20. we go yep this perfect that awesome okay so uh what did just happen um so this this was the offset and we are keeping mm-hmm. that as 0 0 and then we decreased uh, the blurriness because oh okay so this is why it's like acting like exactly how border works right yeah exactly oh. because there's no blur on it it just becomes a solid block pretty much <laughs> like <laughs> why do you know this <laughs> like who tries to do such things man <laughs> how did you learn this thing Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's one of those it's it is one of those things that like you you sort of find out actually there's a a website called um 
CSS battles, CSS battle.dev okay. or CSS battles.dev. And there's so many things uh, you use box shadows for. You just need like, it's the easiest way to get so much stuff done <laughs> <laughs> is with the using multiple box shadows. Wow. Amazing. Uh, <laughs> I know that such kind of CSS will never go to production, but <laughs> amazing. <laughs> this was awesome. Thanks. Um, so this is the six talents and I'm already having a bad feeling. So yeah. it's saying that, um, recreate the image below without changing the HTML. Okay. So, um, uh, so yeah, just like we want to make our box at the top, look like that thing at the bottom. It's uh, basically, okay. we want to add the, okay. add the purple, purple, purple box, purple. right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, um, okay. Without changing the HTML. Oh, there you go. <laughs> That'd be too uh, easy. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I think uh, like credits to your videos. I think I have watched one in which uh, like we have pseudo elements, right? The before and after. So the syntax for that is like let me just use SCSS. Um, I think that's the way to go. I'm not sure. Like I haven't, like I never okay. actually used this so far. So I just know that we have something like that. And uh, like what I'm planning to do is something like and after. And I think this is the syntax for pseudo elements. Um, uh, let me just see if it's working first of all. So with let's say hundred pixels height, let's say 20 pixels and let's give it a background so that we can see it. Right. So hundred percent pseudo elements are the right way to go. Um, and normally this would work, but there is two things that are missing, uh, okay. to actually get it to render. Okay. Uh, so the first one is, um, it's a little bit strange, but on pseudo elements, they're not, cause it's, it's literally going to inject the element into the Dom. Mm -hmm. Um, and with anything CSS, they're not going to like the, the DOMs already there. Uh, and if everything already, if CSS won't inject it, we have to sort of give it the properties. So then it can come into existence. Cause if not, everything would have a pseudo element by default and the DOM would just be a mess. Okay. I think so, I got what you're saying. I think yeah. it was something like display block. So we need that. And there's one more thing, and this is the weird one where it's, um, the content property. Uh, so it's going to be content. Okay. Okay. Content. Okay. And then I thought you were uh, saying that add some text kind of thing. Okay. Oh no. Yeah. No, just content. And then it, for that, we just want an empty string. Oh, uh, okay. Empty string. Or I mean, well, if you put EF, okay. we actually see that show up. Semicolon. Um, the reason, so now we can see it. And the reason we want an empty string is we just have to say that this, by, by putting content and then an empty string there, it's just saying that this has content and the content is nothing, but we have, it has content. So then it becomes, it's actually, that's what's forcing it to be injected into the DOM. Uh, I mean, this so is, it's a, this is like comparing null in JavaScript with, you know, empty strings, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, so, I mean, you can use okay. the content property for other stuff, but it won't inject it into the DOM until it actually has content to okay. print there. Oh, so basically this is, so, but okay. So this is not making sense to me. Why? Because if, so are you saying that whenever people use pseudo elements, like after they, so this always has to come, right? Otherwise it's not going to make any sense. So exactly. So can it like, um, if it always has to be there, probably. I think even if you do not have it, it should automatically have that, you know, empty. Yeah. And it's just because again, like the C um, if, if you didn't declare it yourself, like every, every single element has default, like route the, the user agent styles. Mm -hmm. And if we didn't declare the content to populate it, it means that that would have to be a default on all every element pseudo element. So if that was the default value, then every element on our page would automatically have the pseudo elements being injected. Mm -hmm. And that would cause, like, if you opened your DOM, then everything would have uh, it in there and it, uh, it would be a complete right, right, mess. Right. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. yeah. that's sense. one of the joys, one of the joys of CSS. And, and this is one of those things that's definitely different from other languages uh, in that sense, yeah. All right, so probably I didn't watch your complete video. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so I think um, the positioning is still left, and uh, well, I'm 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 planning to use something like um, relative positioning. What uh, what I'm planning to say is like it give it a top margin. Like now, since it's relative, like right now we can see it over here, and now I can play around with its uh, positioning. Like I can say that you know your top uh, like something like I think it's margin top. I'm not sure. Uh, let me just check actually, I think it should be top. So if I make it 10 pixels, 
yeah exactly so um, since it's relative now whatever i put over here it's moving relative to its original position now what i want to do is i can give it a top of probably 100% something like because i want to, exactly i want to move it to the parent side and probably a bit more something like 105% exactly and uh, similarly for the left uh, i can give something like now the 50% will take it all the way uh, but i want it not 50% but something like 40% so that it kind of goes in the center and it also has a width uh, it's not 100 pixels but probably i can give it 80% okay so of course when it's 80% you know there should be 10 because we want the 10% space here and then yeah exactly and the color is not red but it's purple and we have solved this right perfect <laughs> <laughs> all right awesome man uh Ooh, this this isn't something that would be useful in production uh, either from what we've looked at uh, but pseudo elements are really useful and i think they're underused because okay. what they what they do is like what i see people doing is putting in like empty spans and then styling the span up to try and get like decorative elements or something but yeah, by using it as a pseudo, done that. yeah yeah and but the advantage with it being a pseudo element is like say you have a block quote and you have like a, a design that comes with your block quote you don't want to have to put in your block quote and then put an empty span every time. It's a little bit like we were talking about before with like <laughs> reproducing the code. You just want to put a block quote there and everything comes with your block quote. So <laughs> pseudo elements or whatever, if there's a decorative <laughs> thing coming with it, you don't need to play with two. You're not doing the HTML and the CSS. You can just put in your content yeah, and everything yeah. is styled. Yeah. 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 It's easy to maintain also, I believe. Like Exactly. Uh, I think it makes life a lot easier. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh... How many do we have more? Like last one. Now was last now. one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, the last one, guys. Animate the red box. And I mean, the problem statement is growing, right? Yes. This one, I, the I red couldn't box. do this one too short. <laughs> <laughs> so that it goes to the right side of its parent and then back to the left. The animation should keep looping and never end. Just like how this interview feels to me. <laughs> um, so keyframes, I'm probably like not sure with the syntax, so you can help me, but let me try yep. something on my own. So uh, let's see, add the rate keyframes. Uh, what do I remember? I think we have something like animation and we can pass in the name of our keyframe. We can say something like, uh, let's call it magic because only magic can save us now mm -hmm. and probably give it uh, one second of time or probably three seconds. And then uh, keyframe something magic. And I want to basically say that this is 0%. Then something happens at 50%. And then what happens at 100%, something like that. So now you have to tell me the syntax. All right. Yeah. So you got the right idea. Uh, so we're going to pull the keyframe out of the box selector. Um, keyframes go on their own because they're okay. reusable. <laughs> okay. Um, and we only need one at keyframe. Uh, so you can do uh, okay. the other one. So this can go inside. Probably. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, this makes sense. Um, and then it close, and then it's keyframes with an S, just so we don't. Uh, okay. <laughs> since I noticed it, uh, so at zero percent, you can open up some curly braces, and uh, I see. Okay, got would... it. Yeah, exactly. Got it. Now I can work. I don't need this. I can just work with the CSS. Mm. So, uh, so how we are going to play on this? Uh, okay, I need to see the HTML for that. So uh, we just one thing that's, I'll, I'll say one thing just so we don't go down too much of a rabbit hole, but in the keyframes, there's no selectors. You're only using properties. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I was not going to use that. Um, okay, I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. Okay, let's see. So, okay. I think we can, okay. So you already have a position relative on the content. And I think I can also make this relative, probably. I'm not sure. Just give me a minute so i'm planning that it starts with uh it sticks to the left side initially mm -hmm. then uh, do i need 50 percent? i don't know let's see if i can make it work with 100 percent. and then i can say the right is zero so hopefully you know um okay how do i take now for uh so magic three that's good. so three seconds we do have to give it one more i think just um, after three seconds yeah exactly and let's see <laughs> Uh, damn it. <laughs> oh, okay. So what, what's actually tried, um, where it says right zero, cause maybe I'm going to get it wrong now, change the right zero to left 
I just want to oh, see what okay. happens. Okay. I want to see if that even works. Uh, there we go. Okay. So there's a really weird thing with the top, bottom, left, right properties. Um, if we didn't have a width declared on the box, it probably, I mean, there could have been other issues with it. Um, but because we have a width of 75, when you're saying right zero, it's, it still has like I, it still has the left of zero. Like the left of zero didn't go away, and it knows it's seventy five pixels. So it, you run into this weird situation with the left and the right side sort of fighting uh, with each other a little oh, bit. I guess. Okay. Oh, but uh, what if I do something like right zero and left? Uh, okay, that doesn't make sense. So, yeah, I mean, doing something like this, I was thinking something like fifty percent or something like. What happens now? So yeah, it's still, it's basing it pretty much just on that left, left. property still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, CSS. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so 100% is actually sending it out, right? So I think we can use the calc property and probably I will get some some marks just because I know these things. Uh, and the syntax also for calc is amazing and I'll just quickly show that. Um, so this works like this. But the thing is, if you do not have spaces over here, it will not work. It say, oh my God, I just don't know what's happening. <laughs> For some reason it does that but yeah uh, is it working i think we can also yeah. do it like uh, reverse something like that. i'm not sure and infinite i'm not sure i'm just i'm just oh yeah okay so something happened let's wait and see first it's happening or not uh, okay so it's just happening in reverse uh, is there something like to and fro so yeah it's called it's alternate all right exactly and yeah. probably this is infinite uh, you still want the three seconds, oh, but you do want infinite too. Okay, okay. Exactly. Yeah. Basically, this controls go. this controls the duration of the or, or the speed of the animation. Mm -hmm. Awesome, man! Ah, this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and probably so, okay. we can do some more funky stuff like uh, let's see. like let's also grow the width to one fifty pixels. Uh, okay, so we're here. Here. it's working. It's working. Oh, it's working. Okay, it's working. Yep, amazing. And change the so color also to green. Yeah. A background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that because I make that the amount of times I've set a color on something and been going like, why isn't it working? And I couldn't figure yeah. it out. And it's like, oh, it was a background color that I wanted. Um, yep. <laughs> amazing. So a really big thank you to Rasha for coming onto my channel and trying these challenges out. I think you did really, really good. It was a lot of fun. And if you'd like to see me take on some algorithm challenges uh, and see how I do with those, you can check out the video where I did that over on his channel. The link to that one and his channel is down below. And with that, a really big thank you to both Zach and Randy, who are my supporters of Awesome over on Patreon, as well as all my other patrons for their support each and every month. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.